I will call the meeting to order. And I'm gonna have to maybe <laughs> Miss Secretary, could you take some notes for yeah, me? Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> Sean and we're missing uh, Jeff. Sean's upstairs at budget. He's at budget. I don't know where Jeff is. He had told me ahead of time that he would not be or he and Vince. That's something that uh, they had to do. You know, some rough notes so that we can pull them together and yeah. make some notes. I think I can. Uh, it should, should be short and sweet. I can get the gist of it. Okay. Uh, as I mentioned, if you hadn't heard, um, because of the budget meeting upstairs, Mike is not here running the cameras, so he's just got a single camera running uh, while we are being recorded. Okay. With that, uh, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, did we have any correspondence since the last meeting? No. I should check today. I'm going to check today. Uh, chairman's report, uh, I will do quickly. Um, we had a fairly extensive meeting with the town council on uh, Tuesday. Uh, Jeff was part of that and I was. It was done by Zoom because of the massive snowstorm that was going on. <laughs> <laughs> and we were uh, somehow able to come together anyway. Um, the town council was very, very positive about this committee and the work that the committee is doing um, and unanimously supported our endorsement of Tecton for the two projects. Um, I did show two videos, which I'll be glad to quickly run through if you would like. Um, So um, I ran through these just to kind of give them a little bit of an overview as to what we've been doing, um, the schedule that, that, that we've run. Uh, so we showed, you know, the, the RFQ, the number of uh, firms that we had, and the work that you did in analyzing uh, all of those fun booklets to read. Um, I used Tecton's material throughout because I didn't think it would be fair to show other uh, companies' materials. Um, uh, talk a little bit about how we made the decision to move to four different firms and what those RFP look, materials look like. Uh, talk about the um, site visits that we did. <laughs> and that looks great. Yeah, just <laughs> take a close of the picture. I just was looking for, you know, a sample of some some pictures, but again, tried to stay within uh, the one architectural firm. <laughs> um, it's okay. See there? That looks, you got you from the side there. There we go, yeah. It's not just my clue. <laughs> And we talked about, you know, doing references, things like that, and then the fact that they came in on the 28th and the 1st for some detailed presentations and interviews. And when they were complete, the fact that we then made a recommendation for Tecton. Obviously, I spent a lot more time with them as we went 
went through these. Um, I then had spoken to TechCon ahead of time at the request of the um, chairman of the town council, Tim Slocum, and um, did a short presentation from them um, about their firm. And just you know, show, you know, walk, walk them through a little bit about who Tecton is, some of the people that we have met and worked with, some of the work that they've done. Talk a little bit about the school in Brookfield that we saw and you know, what we found so interesting about it. And how they had gone in and taken a look at our school, our town, had really tried to customize a lot of the discussion around uh, that and how they were very education centered from your preschool and what preschools need all the way up to sixth grade and what a sixth grade needs in, in an elementary school. And then how they had looked at the town and how they had said, you know, based on where the North End is, where the Norton School is, how that could be incorporated into some of the planning, uh, their commitment to get out and work with the community, a uh, little bit of the uh, design ideas that they had begun to play with, and I kept focusing on the fact that you know, these are all extremely tentative. <coughs> Based on that, you know, so if you're sitting at home one day and you really want some excitement, feel free to go to our Facebook page or go to Channel 14 uh, in, uh, in, uh, on YouTube and you can watch the entire town council meeting uh, from home and enjoy every moment. Uh, but as I said, they were, it was a unanimous vote. They were very, very positive. Jeff did speak um, to the process uh, that we've gone through, and I made it clear that you know that was there's a lot of legal requirements out there, and that you know, Jeff has been guiding us through the minefield you know, from the time that we started. So that's that. Any comments or questions? Great job. Yeah. 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 Outstanding. Yeah. I'm glad that you all that. Yeah, that's great. All righty. So with that. Um, owner's rep. Uh, our first bit of business is to make a decision uh, as to who we would like to uh, bring back uh, for further study and uh, who we would like to send an RFP out to. As we know, we can do up to four companies. We have four submissions. Uh, we don't have to do four. We can do one, we can do two, we can do three, we can do four. Um, the evaluation process that we talked about last time around is to basically say which person would rate them one, two, three, four. Um, I'll begin by saying, for me, that's it's difficult. Um, you know, as I read through, um, it, it wasn't always easy for me to ascertain you know, who were the, the best ones and who weren't. You know. uh, let me, oh, before I even get started, um, Sean, since he could not be here, asked me to read, uh, asked me to read this. Um, based on the submittals, I felt all four were qualified and submitted. Oops. Um, quality RFQ response documents. I focused on the workload statements. I noted Morganti's personnel seemed to have a bulk of their workload in the New York area as opposed to Connecticut for what that's worth, unless I'm misreading it. Otherwise, Collier's and CSG seem to have the most workload capacity. Arcadia seemed a little busier. Again, hard to compare apples to apples. 
obviously I only have experience working with colleagues, so I generally feel that I defer to the wishes of the other committee members if they feel strongly about who to interview. And it was solely up to me, I would interview CSG, Colliers, and Arcadis. So that's from Sean. I didn't hear from Jeff, so. Open for conversation. I just wanted to note that um, in the reference calls that I made for the architect, several of the people that I spoke with worked with Colliers, and all of them had glowing reviews of them without me even really like asking them something. They used Colliers, they were great. It's an owner's fan, so. Just putting that out there. Uh, good piece of information. Jeff, question for you. I have a couple of projects ongoing, two projects with two of our applicants. That in any way preclude me from? No, because you're a vendor, they're a vendor. You're not working for them, unlike an architect which would hire your firm. There's no conflict. Would, would the forms require? The, what? the forms required to be the uh, no conclusion. I mean, we'll typically would get those with the RFP. Okay. The CSC didn't provide it. So if you want the, I've worked with all four. I did a uh, temporary high school with Morgan D. Actually, I have a work with colleagues. Uh, our data is I did at Middle Dawn High School with. Um, I know people at all four. I'm with Jeff. I would interview all four. You wouldn't? I would. You would? Yeah. Morganti is more of a construction manager. But uh, lately, they've been doing a lot of uh, RFQs for owners' rent. The reason why a lot of work of them is in New York State is because they're temporary. Oh, right. So it's, they just right to go right over the board. Um, but that's my concern. Yes, uh, Morganti had a letter of recommendation from Tecton, so they must have a good working relationship. Also, Arcadis, I saw, worked on Candlewood Lake with Tecton. So those two, I like that. I had some problems with CSG. One, we're having them doing the financials. There's a typo in there when it turned out their Norwalk project is at 400 million. I think they said 400 trillion. They said 400,000 million, which in my mind, trillion and you know, typos are minor, but not until you pay them the numbers. <laughs> also, it's a little suspect in the litigation. The others listed, you know, lots of litigation. They said not. And I just found that a little bit tough to accept absolutely nothing. Yeah. I think we got to look at like what we're trying to get out of the interview, how you're going to separate them in the interview. So I'm all for interviewing all four, but at the end of the day, you just have to pick one out of them. So what are we, how are you going to rate them in the interview? Well, it's, if they're all going to be, if they're all the same here. Yeah, it's just like the, uh, before. the architect, any company can do the job. It's the person that they assign to work with us that makes a difference. And you know how they interact with the committee, <coughs> particularly for the owners, right? Because you're not really dealing with a huge team. You're dealing with a couple of people that are going to be either, I'm sorry, oh, my back here. No, you're fine. Um, that are going to be either interacting with us, <coughs> interacting with the CM, or interacting with the RD. That's going to be probably the one project manager. Then we're going to have one person who will deal. Two of them listed two different project managers for like uh, Colliers, uh, Arcadis, no, CSG, and Arcadis. Yeah. 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 Had two different project managers, so one for each school, but then Colliers and Mercanti had the same team yeah. for both schools. So I found that was, that was something that struck out to me. CSG is only, at least the way I read it. Yeah, they're young. That's pretty young. Yeah. They spun off of Crack. <clears throat> Crack had an owner's rep business. Jim Giuliano and Chris Sutton, those guys were at Crack. Crack State? Crack? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, right, Florio. 
I've worked with all four firms on multiple jobs. Morganti, one job, Guilford High School. Um, Lawrence Rosati was the owner's rep on that job. I thought he did a good job of uh, having a pretty full scope in terms of on-site presence, plus handling all the paperwork, plus the grant process. Um, Chuck Warrington at uh, Colliers is very good. I've worked with him. Jack Buckus and Rich Sitnick from Arcadis are very good. Jack is a very smart guy. He used He's to an architect. The, that, he was an architect. He worked at JCJ as an architect. He used to run the city of Richmond School. City of Hartford too. Yeah. So Jack didn't write the rules, but he knows how to do rules. Yeah. He. Uh, I think he chaired codes and standards for the state of Connecticut yeah. for like 20 years. And he's got a good relationship with OSCGR, so he's a very knowledgeable guy. Um, CSG, I mean, the thing, the thing that's a little bit difficult if you don't know these projects is the scopes are different. In other words, I'm on the North Brantford project that CSG is on, and they're not really a full service owner's rep on that project. They're doing paperwork. That's pretty much what they're doing. Um, they're not doing a lot of the quality control, you know, schedule oversight, budget oversight work that, uh, you know, a full, and that was the town's choice. The town decided to have a limited scope for the owner's rep. So it's not that they're not doing, they're not contracted to do that, is what you're saying. Right. It's not that they're failing to do it. Yeah, I mean, they are, they are a much smaller company, as you indicated, Chris, and, and so, Understanding, you know, what their their current, you know, key people are up to, and I mean, I think you just got to talk to references you know, because I think you'll get a much a much better feel, um, and we can and we can. You're not limited to talking to the references they provide. I can help you with projects that they didn't include for references and you don't want to talk to those people mm -hmm. yeah. um, for the four firms. Should the litigation element, I mean this is your expertise, should the litigation elements that we see be of concern to us? You know, owner's reps in terms of litigation, you got to remember the owner's rep isn't designing anything and they're not building anything. We make them have professional liability insurance in case there's some Nero claim that gets brought against the town that falls within the scope of the owner's rep. But the owner's reps typically do not get dragged in to litigation on these projects because they don't have any subcontractors. They're not in privity with the architect. They're not in privity with the CM. They're not in privity with any, privity with any of the trade contractors. You know, I mean, I, I was thinking, of, I was trying to think of cases where I've had the owner's rep brought in, and it's usually for like, you know, the owner gets sued because the CM says they're owed money, and then the owner counterclaims against the CM, saying the CM didn't file, you know, change order documents with the state within the six month rule, and then the CM brings the owner's rep in and says that was your job. That kind of thing. What is the litigation you were looking at there? Um, this is from the previous funding, you know, school board funding um, that they called CSG and uh, just to the grand jury, subpoenaed to the grand jury. Um, the town of Enfield under, you know, with uh, DeMantis on the funding on their school. They got called in there and I read in the Norwalk. Um, people in the questioning the school board commission, why are they selecting CSG? They've defended it, but you know, some of the public did question it. So there was no accusation, they just were called in as part of a look. I know there was right. I guess it's ongoing. Yeah. Yeah, there's yeah. some mm -hmm. ongoing investigation about some, I guess, misuse of funds. Well, yeah, it's more concerned about how demo and abatement contracts were handled, whether grantees were forced, this is the allegation, that grantees were pressured into using two specific demo and abatement contractors off the state list instead of awarding to the low bidder. 
Um, and there's also questions about how, you know, whether there was favoritism and waiving requirements for certain grantees on certain projects, but it's an ongoing look. Now there also was, you know, when we went online and just looked at each of the companies, there were some articles in there about um, Torrington uh, and how uh, Torrington, I guess CSG initially was working for Torrington and then Torrington canceled their contract and went to somebody else. Um, I don't see anything in there hopefully that they ever worked for Torrington. They kind of eliminated that from their conversation. Um, well, they were on West Haven High School as well. They, what, they were. Were. The were the owners were up on West Haven. Haven. That's, a, that's a completed project now. So you certainly, you know, you want to find out what happened in Torrington or West Haven, which in touch with the building committee chairs and that's all I did. Experience, but years um, they seem to have the smallest footprint in the world. And then reservation, and they said no litigation. Yeah. And then the other ones was just litigation. One of them gave 70 zillion things to look at, <laughs> microfiche. Um, and, uh, and the other two just said, well, we're huge. Of course we get some litigation. Yeah. Everybody yeah. huge has it and didn't provide anything. So I just was like, litigation here, no litigation here, but more expensive. Experience with your footprint, more capabilities here, it seems like. Than that. So, stop. I thought they were the, the least impressive of the footprints. Uh, I wasn't blown away by anything. Which one? It. CSG. Yeah. So, the question is, yeah, we just I mean, three. I mean, I'm fine four, if we did three, the right, other three, right. if we did four, I'm not going to If they have yeah. no chance, then I'm on. Question is, whether we cut them off. It's too nice anyway. Which one would we not well, necessarily. Yeah, yeah. We don't need to do hour and a half interviews yeah. like we did yeah. before. Well, true. Um, in fact, I think on the sample RFP, it talked about 20 minute interviews. Mm -hmm. um, so we could easily do three or even four in one night. Because realistically, they're not going to be showing their idea for designs for two schools. Right. Like that. So they give us a chance. Here's what we do, and here's its variance. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get a chance to talk to them. And I will, we're going to understand on our behalf. Yeah. I, I would, uh, I mean, this goes without saying, but I would like to, whoever, I would like to make sure that whoever they're going to assign as the person for a project comes to hand. Mm -hmm. I think that's in the RFP. Yeah, it's a deal breaker. Yeah. Well, uh, I want it to get a sense. I think the way the RFP reads is that it's limited to people that are actually going to be part of the project. That's right. I think that we like for this for this role we really need someone or a team or people that we're going to be able to get along well with and feel like we have some sort of um, ability to talk and ask hard questions sometimes right and I think the only way to know that is to actually speak with all of them. Well I think you know a, a, a good parameter would be us asking the hard questions is not difficult. It's them telling us the uh, yeah. true answer. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah. true. Um, yeah, have you that's going to be the barometer. Yeah. Well, and that may be going back to checking references ahead of time, so right. comparing their answers to what we have found out as we've done some investigation. The only, <laughs> the only reference checking that's of any use when it comes to talking about um, owner's reps is the job is complete. Because the stuff that the owner's rep does, if there's a problem, you really don't know until the audit. So you need to act always. Yeah, I mean, it's things like, you know, one of, the, one of the big things that the owner's rep has to do for you for the long run is really have all the O and M materials, all the warranties, the as builds, you know, the audit. There's a checklist of documents that the state wants you to have for the audit. Have all of that organized, not in a box, but digitally. 
you know, and provide multiple, just, just organizing it so that people can find it. Files are properly named and things like that. It's stuff that you would, I mean, I, I was doing an audit one time for a town and everybody was gone, right? And they said, can you help us? You were the lawyer on this, can you help us? And so they gave me a DVD and all, there were, without exaggeration, there were 300 files and none of them were named. <laughs> Numbers on. You know how you scan something and your yes. copier does like that? Uh -huh. Like mine says, like Kyle Cerro, 12345 JI, yeah. right? Yeah. That's what it was. Uh, so you got to sign my office. office. One to figure out what the heck it is. Click. No, nope, that's not it. Click. No, nope, that's not it. Look at that one change order. It's going to be in somewhere. Jeff, what, are, um, what do we expect from them as far as in the design phase and during construction, as far as um, the painful aspects of construction? You know, PCO reviews and that, where do they fit in with that as far as for what we're asking? They're critical in the construction phase, not so much in design. You know, design, you know, they're going to attend the, uh, the meetings with OSCGR to make sure that everything's copacetic there. Um, you know, maybe they'll participate in value engineering meetings and share experience they've had on other projects with bidding strategies. But construction, they're critical. You have to decide, that's one of the things you and I emailed about, yeah. you have to decide how much of an on-site presence you want them to have. You know, I mean, it's important that they have an on-site presence because otherwise all they're doing is forming opinions based on what they see in a, on a piece of paper. You know, so you get a monthly report from a CM and everything looks great, but if they're in the field and they're saying, wait a minute, you know, concrete's not 60% complete, the guy hasn't been on site, or gee, there's only four bricklayers here the last week. You know, you need, you need them to kind of like patrol, you know. And how much? You know, when I did Long Meadow School, we actually had a full-time person on site. Of course, that was done more with a GM. And GC, maybe? A GC, yeah. Uh, and so, you know, we had an R person there documenting every sub that was there and the work that was going on and that sort of thing. Um, I, I noticed one contract that I happened to pick up online when I was doing some searching in the companies uh, specifically said, we, whenever there's ac activity on site, we want, we want you there. That's how they put it in the contract. So, and obviously the more you want, the costly it's going to be. That's, I was going to get to that too. We've we got to be pretty clear about that in the RFPs, otherwise we're going to get numbers all over. The place. That's right. So and do you need somebody full time on each site, or do you can you have one person going back and forth? Uh, do they need to be there every single day? Uh, on projects day? like this, I would say you want them twice a day, twice a week rather. And if it's four hours on one, four hours on the other, that's two days a week. Assuming that we go with the same owner's rep for both projects. I was going to say 10 hours max per week per site. Because, yeah, because once once you start spending more time than that, what, what are you doing? Yeah, you're probably right. You know what I'm saying? Because you're for a long time, there's not a lot to see. Yeah, they're moving directly. You know. Yeah. You know, let's say it's a 20 month duration. You know, really. They're, they're checking to make sure that what's in the schedule, what's in the two-week look-ahead that's being given to the subs is accurate, you know, that there's no real glaring safety issues. You know, they're observing if you want them there during testing. But, you know, if you do more than 10 hours a week, it starts to become a waste of money because there's nothing done to look at. Total or per, per building? Per building. So if we said a minimum of 10 hours yeah. per week per building. Oh. Okay, I say eight. Yeah. Eight to ten. Yeah. yeah, that's fine. So we're going yeah, to come so back to the RFP in a minute, but, you know, it was like, I'd like to document that because right now it doesn't say anything about, you yeah. know, its coverage uh, during the construction time. Jeff, do you typically expect them to have, um, to be a reviewer for the PCOs? Yes. <clears throat> they review what they do. I want to go into yeah, that before it comes to the building committee. Yeah. Sure. You know, the, I'm, I'm asking questions for reasons. You know, I mean, I've seen reviews, and then I've seen, you know, they'll pick and choose which ones they decide to be the hill to die on, and others are. And, and 
until it becomes inflamed, yeah. hands off. Well, I'm like hoping when we get to that stage that when things are coming to us, they've already been, they've gone through a clear Thoroughly process. Vetted, yes. And, you know, we're just basically rubber stamping at that point. I, I agree. And if, and, if, and if it's tumultuous, then, then we ask some questions and say, well, what's up? But for the most part, it's been thoroughly reviewed. And they are one of the thorough reviews. It's tumultuous. To some degree, we say we'll go back and, you know, work out the problem. But hopefully they resolve it before it comes to us and yeah. then it can be discussed. With right. a recommendation. So in, my, in my dream, <laughs> okay, which happens about... 50% of the projects I'm involved in that people There's no say, change orders. There's a, you have a <laughs> North Haven does everything I tell them to do. Because I've been their lawyer for 30 years. Okay? We made a stamp for the middle school and the high school. We made a stamp. Architect, CM, owner's rep, building committee chair last. So nothing came to the building committee until those first three were signed on. Because everything, every PCO, every pay app, every piece of correspondence asking for money, we stamped it, and we said, don't show it to us until the first three are signed. That's why you know that. All those projects were, <laughs> all those projects, North Haven High School was $2 million under budget and on time. The middle school was about 200000 under budget and on time. So, we don't want to look at anything, and we had, Collier's was on the middle school. And we would tell them, we're waiting on you, we're waiting on you. The first two people signed, everybody's waiting on you. Yeah, we did work with Collier's extensively as our school modernization. Right. And, uh, you know, I don't know the other three companies at all. I liked working with the Collier's people. I felt that they were very professional and had to come through uh, in almost every case uh, with, with what we were looking for. Um, so, you know, I, I feel comfortable with them being one of the four that we bring back. In terms of the other three, as I said, two of them I don't know it all. One of them, you know, I did have a couple questions on as I was just going online and doing some check. So, to go back to your point, just because we get three signatures on a piece of paper doesn't mean it gets approved. Or that it was really bad. Right. But that's definitely a step in the right way. Well, I have an ulterior motive because all three of the people that sign have one thing in common, they have professional liability insurance. <laughs> <laughs> But if we're getting all three of them signing and then we're not approving, we got something is wrong. We got a problem there somewhere. So, what type of person, credential-wise, are we would be the ideal, but a practical? I mean, do we want somebody who has a lot of construction experience, or do we want an architect, somebody with a good design experience, somebody with um, you know contracting, um, construction management? Or what, what's the what's the ideal person? Aside from a, a no everything person. I mean, the, the, the typical successful owner's project manager is somebody that at some point worked, whether it's as a project manager, whether it's as a superintendent, you know, worked in some supervisory capacity in the field, but has transitioned into the, you don't want an owner's rep who, you know, gee, I was a project manager for 20 years and this is my first job as an owner's rep. Because the paperwork part of it, they can, they can get overwhelmed by it. Especially if you pick one firm for both schools. Just the monthly pay apps. You know, if it's the same person reviewing both, the likelihood of there being stuff missed like being double charged on change order markups and things like that increases incrementally. But you know, the, you got to have somebody that understands the way buildings are built. So whether they have an engineering background, whether they have a project management or construction management background, isn't as critical as much as okay, I've you know been an owner's rep ten times in the last ten years, and here's the ten schools I did. And did, did I hear you correctly in that it's it's uh, is advantageous? It is, they have one company, but manager A does one school and manager B does the other, rather than one person doing the both because things could get jumbled. I think so. I, mean, I, I, I worry. I worry about that. I worry about if you have, 
you have one person doing, again, if they don't have anything else to do, if they have no other work and all they're doing is spending 40 hours a week in Cheshire and they're dividing their time between both schools, they could probably do it. Um, but you know, if you've got multiple projects plus you're reviewing PCOs and PACs on these two schools and going to building committee meeting on both schools every week and having to be prepared and be, having to be someplace else in the state, on other projects doing the same thing. I just think, you know, you have to be realistic from a human perspective about how much one person can do well. But is that their problem, or do we want to put something in the RFP that says you'll have two people or something like that? Or just I think, adequate I think, staff? I think, I think you want to see how they... See, it used to be... It used to be that nobody wanted an owner's rep. I mean, I used to, in the mid-90s, I used to have owners fighting with me. What are we, what are we paying an architect for? What are we paying a construction architect's doing CA, CA, everybody? It doesn't work. There's no municipality in Connecticut that is set up to handle the volume of paperwork on a construction project. So New Haven, they learned a lesson. And then Bridgeport, and then Hartford. And then once the city started doing it, the state said, oh, Everybody should have an owner's rep. We'll start reimbursing for it. So they finally, also you know, used to, in the state of Connecticut, in the mid-90s when I did the 10 Wallingford schools, and I told them to go see them at risk, they had to get an opinion from the Attorney General of Blumenthal at the time that it was an appropriate method of project delivery because the state had no experience with construction managers at risk. Now, if you go look at the way DAS does their projects, everything is CM at risk. So sometimes they, they move a little bit slowly. But it, but, what I was going to say is, it used to be when you went out for an ownership, you got one person. Now they give you teams. One person's going to do the financial. One person's going to do the inspections in the field. One person's going to do pre-construction. I'm not so sure you need a team. You know what I'm saying? I mean, if you're going to if you're going to say, okay, this person's going to be in the field, and this person's going to do the paperwork. Well, are you paying for those two people to have to talk to each other? You know, and what? And, and, I can, I can understand if you have one person that's going to do all the OSCGR stuff with you. Because you definitely want somebody that has rapport with OSCGR. Because you're going to need that person. That person is going to be critical for, for example, the architect will submit the list of eligible and ineligible costs. Right? And then the state will send you a letter saying, oh, we've got more and more. You need somebody that has the rapport to be able to advocate for more of those costs being eligible. Because remember, you get 50% reimbursement of eligible costs. You know, so you want to maximize those grant dollars. So having somebody that has that OSCGR report is great. Um, but I think you gotta, you know, you gotta see how they're they really need to be able to explain to you how on other projects, if they're gonna have two, three people per project, how on other projects it is worth. And how do they not waste your money? Because you don't want to spend a ridiculous amount of money on an owner's rep. They're not building anything. They're just basically babysitting and doing the paperwork for you. But to do the paperwork, they need to know what's going on. I've seen municipalities say, I want an owner's rep for 20 hours a week. And then they're looking at the paperwork and stuff's getting approved because they really don't know what's going on. And then people the building committee come back and say, why'd you approve this? Well, gee, I didn't know it wasn't done. You don't pay me for field work. Okay. Can we uh, get a motion? Um, how do we want to handle the evaluation piece? I mean, we can just do a motion. Okay. And that's that's part of this. Like, how do we want to evaluate it next week? We just got. I mean, the price still has to be a part of it. So, it's, are we just going to rank them based on our feel of how they are? Well, RF, I'm talking about RFQ, RFQ, RFQ right now. Do we go with well, they are one, two, three, or four? The RFQ, we just make a motion. That's so what I was saying. Down the line. Yeah, so that's what I was saying. So if we do, if I we make a motion to uh, for the RFP, the Colliers International, for the uh, orders are up. I'll second that. I'll second that. I make a motion for it. Oh, we can only have one motion at a time. Okay. We can amend that's a motion, right but, now. but uh, we have a, a motion and a second. Any discussion on that? All those in favor? Okay, so Collier's is definitely one of the four. Other motions? I move for Arcadis to bring them in for the RFQ. Thank you. Second. Second. 
Do we have a second? Second. Okay. 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 Two seconds. Which one was that? Arcadis. Arcadis. Thank you. I'll give you a second to catch up. Thank you. And then who seconded? Yeah. We had a second in. You can do the next one. Any discussion on that? All those in favor? Okay. Is that unanimous again? Unanimous again. Great job. Yes. I just raised my hand for a second. All right. I'm going to make a motion to bring Morganti in for an RFP. All right. I'll motion for Morganti. Do we have a second? Got it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Discussion on that? All those in favor? Oh. One. One abstention. Okay. Opposed? Did so you want all two opposed? No. I'm oh. I thought you didn't see the votes. So. No, no, we had one. All person. those in favor. Let us do it again. All those in favor. Okay. Okay. And all those opposed. You have a. I just feel like we have two good ones in Arcadis and Colliers. I don't know that there's a lot that would separate one Gantee from bringing them in from the other. Okay. Yeah, I just don't like picking up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, we have one one company left. Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion just to move the discussion. All right. There's a motion to uh, approve CSG for the RFP. Do we have a second? I second it just to move along. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You don't have to note just to move along. Right. <laughs> just a second motion. Yeah. All right. uh, discussion. So, just something to consider is if we're not, if any of these were not really considered, the price could sway the fact that you may not have them as your top four. If those numbers are close, the pricing isn't close, you may end up with somebody you don't want. Say that again. If we're just putting people in the mix, no, just to have them in the mix, mm -hmm. we may get married to them if the yeah. if our opinion numbers are close and the pricing isn't, and they're the low guy. Mm -hmm. we well, we haven't talked in evaluation process yet, and that's part of that process, obviously. But I felt like the last the last process really helps keep that in balance. It didn't it didn't feel like any of them. Yeah, we can still Railway we can costs. structure it so that the fee alone is not what's driving it, right. which is I think you know what worked okay for us last time. That it was important. It was a piece of it, but it, it didn't drive the entire. Thing. Other discussion on CSG. All those in favor of uh, having CSG as part of our RFP. Those opposed? Okay. So we're inviting three back. All right, let's take a look at the RFP. opportunity to take a look at the RFP um, so we have to fill in you know some of the ones that uh, 
that are in yellow here, three firms we have just voted on, so we know that. Scope of services, do we need to put something in there for time and field? Yes, please. Yeah, like, where is that? That's not the scope of services. Yeah, yeah. So what do we want to add? I think there's a yeah, more, I isn't there a more extensive scope down below? Yeah. yeah the scope of services here just references that it's going to be in line with the original one. Yeah, the detailed scope is at the bottom. Remember, we had a separate RFP for each site. Yeah. I'll just hit them in order so we don't jump out. We're doing the same thing. Site A, site B, both combined, P-wise. Correct, and that's for four total uh, proposals. Very good. Yeah, we want you know, the pricing to be the same. Yeah, it's it's like, like, it we could end up with, with two different owners' reps. For yeah, we could end up with one. Of if we have one doing both projects, we want to see that it takes some money in the yeah. process. It's of course, really the town council asked that immediately and knew the number already. <laughs> 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 How much we had saved by having. That's good good as nice intelligence. Yes. That's his bolded section under proposal requirements. So, so it's is, not what is your question there, Chuck? I'm just saying that's the bolded part right there under proposal requirements is what you're talking about. Having the four different numbers. Okay. Can you scan down or do I have to? Oh, you have, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm not sure. You have to do it. I have to do it. Yeah, sorry. All right. The bolded section under proposal requirements. Keep going. That part addresses what you're talking about. All right. That's what we're talking about. Okay. So I thought it was, yeah, it was up there. I'm so you know, looking. Where, where's that bolded part? You go on uh, the next part to fill in with the other four for the schedule. All right. So this, this shows we don't need four, obviously. Do, how long do we want the interviews to be for? This uh, shows 35 minutes. I would say 45 minutes. Yeah, it sounds good. 45? Is it a half hour plus 15 or 45 plus more? 20 and 20. 20 and 20. 20, 20. 20. Presentation, discussion, or yeah. questions? Yeah, it gives a little more time for right. questions. I mean, they're not, they don't, they don't, they shouldn't need that much time to talk about what they're going to do. No, but they'll want to do a presentation. Yeah, yeah. But they don't need that whole hour. They don't need a lot. So, no. so okay. 45? So 45 minutes. 25 for presentation and 20 for uh, questions or vice versa? I would go 25 for questions because they're going to be more chatty than the architects. So you want to say what for the PowerPoint part? I'm 20, sorry. 20 for the PowerPoint part? 20 presentation, 25 question. Oh, yeah. 25. Yeah. 25 yeah, so you're okay there, and then down, yeah, down below, I want to change that to 25. 410 is a Monday. You know, I, if everyone else can make it, that's hard for me because of my class. Well, we're going to do it all in one night, so let's mm -hmm. yeah, make it for a lesson. We'll, we'll bounce up now that we've got the timing, mm -hmm. we can reschedule. So, schedule. We have 25 days on Hikram. What's that? Does 25 need a Hikram? No matter what I do, she's always got some correction. <laughs> this is a nine-nine part of something. Uh, <laughs> 25 to 23 should be hyphenated. Read more about hyphens attached to the numbers. No thanks. Right, just I think it was too so Sean and I wouldn't be able to make it. Do we really well, need that much time? Or do they really need that much time? So what do we, let's see, we're talking about this is what, 10th, 11th, 12th? Yeah. 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 So, Both is the best. So I'm not showing anything myself. It's from my own personal account. 10th, 11th, 12th. Yeah. So what is your preference? Keep talking with Thursday. So we don't want Monday. Can't do Tuesday, Thursday, Thursday, we got to make some decisions. So 
Tuesday or Wednesday? Tuesday is a council meeting. Okay. So you want to go to Wednesday the 12th? Is that okay with everyone? Yeah. Sure. And then we have the regular meeting on the third. On the next and day. The yes. meeting on the next day. And then what do you want to do for times? Well, we've got 45 minutes and then maybe 15 minutes in between. Yeah, six, seven, eight hours. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, six to 645, 7 to 745, 8 to 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 when the kids are out of school, it's like child care becomes difficult. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't want to burn out my, you know, husband or other people who help us. <laughs> Is there any particular order? Did he say the 12? Maybe. My babysitter can watch all the kids. <laughs> like a party <laughs> kid. What order do we want to see them? Doesn't matter. Could do them in reverse order of how they were appointed. Sure. So, so, so Anthony first, then Arcadia. Collier's last, and then Collier. same process we have to go into executive session. Yep. So yeah, so we'll need a short meeting before. With Chris. <laughs> and then exactly and then the same thing. We come out of executive <laughs> session and nice and early. early. <laughs> <laughs> Cost proposals. You got it. Okay. Here we well, go. We're getting this down. Yep, but I made you I made you a list of your next eight. <laughs> Don't do that to us. Yeah. <laughs> Every time we so we see the end here, you say no, no, no. It's way okay, out there. One there. the council, <laughs> one down, nine to go. One down, nine to go. Okay. <laughs> the, the other commissioning agent for the time. after the CM, yeah. Yeah. Let me read that. Right, let me just get through these three. Then we can think about it. that only team members necessary to the presentation can be interviewed. All questions must be received by email no later than. Yeah, last oh, time Jeff Solon uh, spent a good part of the weekend uh, 
going through and answering your questions ahead of time. Uh, I, know I did. Two of you were going back and forth on that. Not really. <laughs> so, <laughs> Not really, okay. Well, I wasn't part of that other than I was on the receiving end. All of the, kind of, they all kind of have legal components. Yeah, yeah. of the emails. That so was, is uh, that enough time then? That one week, is that enough time? Because you got to give it to them a couple of These guys aren't going to have a lot of questions. Yeah. Their questions are going to be about the projects. We will um, not be able to make the April town council meeting. So it's either going to end up being in May or the, I've got the special meeting. And it sounded from what Tim Slocum was saying the other night that he didn't want to just jam it into a budget meeting or something like that. He wanted to thoughtful presentation mm -hmm. done. Sounds like a special meeting. Right? <laughs> Might very well be. So we probably need to be a little bit vague there. You say no later than and then put the the actual schedule on council? I don't know. Do we even have to have that in there? Or put the word no. or put the word anticipated? I, I think I would just yeah, for this for this particular contract, it's there's nothing happening right now where there's any critical date for the orange rock to do anything. We just say May twenty twenty nine. Why not? Yeah, that's fine. When is our when are we starting to get into S D drugs? That's not I forget what the schedules on that. The architect's got five days from today to sign the contract. Contracts. They indicate so that's going to be six a quick turnaround. They're going to want to do some meetings, right? Kickoff meeting. Yeah, well, I've got them scheduled for our next meeting. They're coming in and start talking about schedule of meetings and at least you know, short term stuff. So. But it sounds like they'll sign the contract. I've got, got a feeling the contract was included the with the RFT, and they, everybody signed an acknowledgement saying if awarded, they'll sign it without alteration within five days. So. Yeah, so I haven't heard that there's any issues at all, and I've talked to their head a couple of times. All righty. Are you all set there, Chuck? Yep. Okay. That's just the general, um, general specs. Do if they don't have someone like you helping them out. Where's the mass? Where's the It's the last part, isn't it? Uh, it's not conflict, non There's supposed to be an appendix A. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, the RFP might be a separate document. So, where was it that we were going to put in the hours? Yeah, I thought there was a doesn't it Doesn't it reference an appendix A? Was it in the RFQ? I don't have I don't have my copy with me. It does up above. Yeah, if you go back uh, in the fee proposal, there's a separate fee proposal. Well, there you go. The That's the attachment. There attachments, fee proposal, or the contract. But, it but I know that we had a detailed scope. I'm just trying to remember, was it in the RFQ? I think it was probably in the RFQ, and that's what it was referenced to that. Yeah. 
but I want to make sure we have clearly delineated what we want from them on site. So we want to just put it up in the scope as well. Yeah. On site services to include. I would just at the end of that first paragraph that say construction ser construction phase services shall include a minimum of eight to ten hours per week on site. Just looking in the uh, RFQ real quick because that's where the detail is. Make sure we didn't say something. Just says that the RFQ just says provide on site staff as necessary to monitor construction. Yeah, that's too good. Right? Yeah. So we can add it. A, a minimum of, I think you got to add safe during the construction phase, though, right? Yeah. yeah. Scope of services. Just a new paragraph, is it? I would just add it to the, at the end of that first paragraph where we say the um, breakdown for the purposes. This one. Yeah. I would just say construction phase services shall include a minimum of eight to ten hours or whatever number you want out there. Okay. Ten was good. Ten, ten per building. building. Yeah. Ten hours per week per on site representation. And that, that could end up being five days a week, a couple of hours each time. Yeah, I mean, there'll be, there'll be points in the job where there's critical work going on and you want them there more, but the other times when there's nothing for them to look at. Yeah, there's an issue or problem, they spent four hours in one day there, so. I also don't want them getting in the way. And the firms that you, sh the firms that you shortlist, they're all very professional, they're not gonna get in the way. Say at this site or something, so it makes it clear that it's per site. Yeah. But this RFP is this RFP is right. 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 But they're all going to bid on both, so maybe it's adding like at this site or something. But they're going to have yeah. another RFP that says right. 10 hours exactly. of new work. I just want to be clear of that. So you want to say weekly comma per project. Yeah. I, yeah. I just don't want to end up with a misunderstanding down the line when they're only spending a few hours and they say, well, you want to do for this project? Yeah, this project. I would say make it this. And I'm sure that Jeff will make it clear in the contract. Perfect. And then we're going to do the uh, pricing the same way we did last time. We have two different price sheets and they give us two prices. One if they do one building, one if they do Is still doing 6535. On the evaluation process, we haven't really talked about the evaluation yeah. process yet. Talk about that. Yeah, again, it's like how do we want to evaluate it? I think it's harder to come up with a yeah. bunch of categories. I mean, it's really like, a, it's like it'll be, these people. Right. Yeah. Might, yeah. Might, yeah. might be one category. 65% is based on our yeah. overall impression yeah. of this particular company. Well, I think there's references, credentials of the people assigned to the project, overall impression, and then maybe Q and A. If we want to put something there, sort of a wild card, the how did they handle Q and A for us? Just roll that overall impression. Yeah. What about time management and not going over the presentation? <laughs> <laughs> 
That's not fair happened. when they started to do the last time we started to look at these. Oh, things. can we talk to the church and let them know our schedule? Because if we're not on a full hour of the schedule, we're not going to have the bells going. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, we are set up now, so yeah. we are starting each one on the hour. Oh, okay. <laughs> so when the bell goes, That's we start. Right. Well, so we, should, we should. Quasimodo pulls the rope <laughs> over there. We we'll should time it so that at the end of the 20 minute presentation, the bell rings. Yeah, we'd have yeah. to talk to the church and see if we could work that out. So I don't think that's a possibility. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think maybe three categories that you Say to the town council that the fee was important, but it wasn't overriding. Mm -hmm. So the 65-35 seemed to be, I thought, a good balance. So that works out fine. So if you, if you can just pull something together, I got pulled together based on three things: yeah. overall impression, credentials, references. Yeah. What will we teach? We talk about it next week. Right. Yeah. That sounds great. And yeah. we'll, have, we'll have to talk references when we meet next week. Yeah. Yeah. Who's going to do some call? And, is that it for the RFP? I think so. Else? I think we went all the way down. Yeah, we, we looked at everything else, so we should be all set. Any other issues or problems? Then uh, can I have a motion to accept the RFP as amended? I make a motion to accept the RFP as amended for the Martin School. Second? Second. 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 We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? All right. Opposed? No one. Unanimous. A second motion for the new North End School, RFP for the North End. Okay. Wait, so Dennis moved? Dennis moved okay. to approve the RFP for the new North End. <laughs> you, deserve, you deserve a little present at the end. Do we have a second to that one? Chris Daddy. Oh, Chris. C-H-R-S. <laughs> I'll second to ND. I have to tell you, by the way, while, while she's catching up on the typing, uh, Chris never, one of the town council members, Sylvia, had written a fairly long note after our last meeting congratulating us and saying that she's been watching the, uh, the meetings online. But she specifically noted that it's been interesting to watch the humor that, <laughs> that, 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 the, that the group has. And I never thought of us as being all that humorous, but she, she did note that. She may be watching us now. I don't know. <laughs> it's nice to have fans out there. Uh, there are a few. I was surprised there are several town council members that have been watching these meetings. Without falling to school as far as I know. That's great. I mean, this is an important piece for the staff. You know, yeah. you get this, and then there's a, the editorial today is all on our finding the owner's rep. Oh. Who was the editorial? Call me. That's a second wrote the editorial. Oh. Stepping up for school modernization. Yeah, so have it's, an opinion it's, and not it's, it's, it's all board of editors. Yeah, it's from the, there's aren't that many people on this board. Um, but it's all about how we're done with step one, now comes step two. You guys better do a good job on that one. <laughs> yeah, no pressure. <laughs> no pressure now. Did we end up voting on that second uh, motion? No, oh, no, okay. I finished typing, so we oh, can right, vote now. There we go. Any discussion on that? All right, then all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. All righty. Okay. Okay. Awesome. And I believe, any new business to bring up today? Hearing none, do I have any motion to adjourn? Chris Natty will make the motion. Why did you spell that? What? Not a practice. Oh, there you go. It's not yet. Yeah, I think it can tag people. So if anyone gets tagged with this, I'm sorry if you get an email. My, my wife's name is Nedra, N-E-D-R-A. 
and anytime you type it in, it changes into her. <laughs> <laughs> she was highly insulted. Um, we have a motion to adjourn. Do we have a I'll second? second it. We're going to second that one. All, right. all those in favor? Yeah. That was unanimous. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you. See you all next Thursday.